Alright you guys, so it looks like I am in Proving Theorems about Parallelograms. This is slide number 6. And I don't know if you guys know anything about parallelograms, but it's a quadrilateral. And that means that it has four sides. Um, you've got two sets of parallel sides. Um, and you have those two sets of parallel sides are congruent to each other. And we've learned what parallel and congruent means um, in our previous lesson. So it looks like we're just good to go. We'll click on uh, GeoGebra Activity. All right, so I'm looking at my standard parallelogram. It's got four sides, A, B, B, C, C, D, and D, A. Well, let's see what it wants us to do. All right, so I've already got my letters in here. Um, so I need to find the slope of each one. Parallelogram, find the slope. Okay, so slope is under your angle icon. And we're going to click on slope. So I'm going to click on AB first. So it looks like I got the slope is 1.5. Now I need to find BC. I bet that's going to be 0. If you can't see, it can always go to move. Move it over. Just remember to go back to slope. <clears throat> so all horizontals have a slope of 0. CD, 1.5. And DA, I bet, is also zero because it's horizontal. So my opposite um, sides are not only parallel and they're not only equal, they have to happen to have the same slopes. <clears throat> Question number two, measure and record the lengths of each side. Well, I've already told you they're equal to each other. So I need to find side lengths. So I come up here instead of going on slope, I'm going to click on distance or length. So I'm going to click on AB, which is 3.61. And what's wrong with BC? Come on, BC. Looks like it's a 2. CD was next. CD is 3.61. And then last but not least, DA. And DA is, click on that, got a 2. So like I said, parallelograms, opposite sides are not only parallel, they are equal. And we found out they have the same slope. Question 3. How are the lengths of the four sides of the parallelogram related? Opposite sides are congruent. Like I said, opposite sides are going to be the same. They're going to be equal. All right, question four. Measure and record the four interior angles of parallelogram ABCD. So I'm going to have angle A, angle B, C, and D. I thought I needed all the information. Let's see. I kind of, I really want to erase all that stuff I've got on there. Just, oh, it's really busy. Let me erase all of this, get back to my original. And I've got to find angle measures. So remember, when you're finding angle measures, you have to go in a right circular motion, which is clockwise. Otherwise, it, it gives you the angle outside the figure. So come up to your angle. And to find angle A, I've got to click on D, A, B. To find angle B, click on A, B, C. To find C, I'm going to click on B, C, D. And last but not least, to find angle D, I'm going to click on A. I'm sorry, that's a C. That was a C. Click on C, D, and then A. And I'm going to see if I can make that a little bit bigger so you can see what I'm doing here. All right, so angle A was 56.31, which is also angle C. 56.31. Angle B and D are going to be the same, so angle B and D are both 123.69. And I think that's all I had to find. Alright, so a parallelogram, we have learned so far, has parallel sides. Opposite sides are parallel. 
opposite sides are the same, their slopes are the same, and the opposite angles are the same. Question five. How are the angle measurements of the opposite interior angles related? They, oops, are congruent. All right, question six. Move vertices A, B, and C to modify the original parallelogram. As you change the parallelogram, notice what happens to the sides and the angles. How does moving the vertices affect the relationships between the sides and the angles that you noted in question three through five? I'll tell you right now, it's not going to change. I tell you right now, I'm not going to change. I'm going to click move. So I'm going to move A. You see how it kind of moves along with it? So these opposite angles, B and D are the same. A and C are the same. So I can move B. I can move it totally opposite parallelogram. And the opposite angles are the same. So it's not going to change the relationship at all. So it does not change the ray relationship. Question 7. Explain how you can prove your observations in question 3 and 5 using a traditional proof. You don't need to develop the steps of the proof. Simply describe an approach that you might use. Which theorems might appear in your proof? Can't draw a diagonal in the parallelogram to assist you in describing an approach. Oh my goodness. Um, I don't have diagonals. Okay, so let me get back to my original. Diagonal B to B, diagonal A to C. <clears throat> oh, I'm sorry, one diagonal, my bad. Well, I've got two triangles. Um, I would imagine they are congruent triangles from the uh, side angle side, or uh, in this case, probably side, 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 because they share a side. We already know the opposite sides are equal. And these two opposite sides are equal, so it's they're congruent from side to side to side. Um, yeah, I think that's all they're asking. Yeah, pretty much it. So, um, two triangles are formed with the diagonal. The uh, two triangles can be Proven congruent by side 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 because opposite sides are congruent and the diagonal for both triangles is the center side. So I really didn't prove anything here. Just kind of saying, okay, well, I've got two triangles. Um, now my two triangles are going to be congruent because their sides are all the same. Side, side, side. Um, okay. Let's see. Okay, so they went with transverse on all this. Uh, I just maybe read it differently. Now there's my self-evaluation. All right, you guys. So I will catch you in just a few minutes with whatever we got to do next.